Mr. Scott, uh, Senator Menendez of New Jersey is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I begin my questions, I, I want to celebrate that in the past year, we have seen the first Latino Federal Reserve governor and the first ever Latino Federal Reserve Bank president. These are historic milestones that show we are finally making progress, something that I have been at for quite some time, uh, to the leadership uh, of our economic institutions. Uh, so I want to applaud that. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I hope that progress can continue and extend to the rest of the Federal Reserve staff. Thank you. Uh, I agree with my friend, the ranking member, that when you tell a story, you should tell the whole story. Uh, Mr. Chairman, are, are you uh, aware of the Washington Post's February 27th article that says the economy is roaring and immigration is a key reason. I don't recall that, but I would have read it. Let no. me read it to you. <laughs> immigration has propelled the U.S. job market further than just about anyone expected, helping cement the country's economic rebound from the pandemic as the most robust in the world. It goes on to say economists and labor experts say the surge in employment was ultimately key to solving unprecedented gaps in the economy that threatened the country's ability to recover from prolonged shutdowns. Would you take issue with those statements? You know, there are a lot of adjectives and adverbs in there that you wouldn't see in, in, fed, in fed world. Uh, but the, the take out the adjectives and give me the, on the, yeah, the story. The story is, uh, I think, broadly that this it is that there was a very significant increase in the size of the workforce last year. And it was happening all during the year. And we were wondering what it was. And the answer was it was really two things. It was um, labor force participation, but it was also immigra immigration. And if you look at the Congressional Budget Office numbers, it kind of makes sense because there, there was a lot of growth. Wages were coming down. The economy is is bigger, and that's those are probably in partly part effect. This is without making any judgments on immigration or immigration policy, but I think that's no, I, an economic fact. I'm not fact. suggesting that. I'm just suggesting the facts are yep. that we had uh, 10 or 11 million jobs that were going unfulfilled in our economy. Uh, they lacked the productivity that is necessary for success economically, and as part of that, clearly uh, immigration uh, helped fuel part of our revival uh, uh, coming out of the pandemic. In fact, those were the people who were the essential workers when the rest of us were staying home. Uh, so I agree we need to do uh, what is necessary to have a regularized border. But I also think that um, just to create um, the, um, the, the context of immigration as a, as a scourge uh, is absolutely wrong. Let me turn to another question. In my view, the sticky inflation we've been seeing in the housing sector is principally due to the massive nationwide housing shortage. The Fed's monetary policy report attributes the shortage to restrictive zoning, high interest rates, and tighter underwriting by banks. I would also add to that list underfunding of key HUD programs that shore up and expand our supply of affordable housing. If the housing supply shortage continues to grow, are we likely to see continued housing inflation? Yes, we are. And housing's already becoming less and less affordable for low and middle income Americans. According to the National Low Income Housing Coalition's 2023 out of reach report, a worker earning the minimum wage in New Jersey would have to work two full-time jobs to afford, uh, to afford a modest one bedroom rental home at fair market rent. Do you agree that increasingly unaffordable housing is a problem for the economy? I think there are two things going on. One is a longer-term housing shortage, and the other is the pandemic effects and the associated higher interest rates, which are things that will pass through. When all that passes through and rates are normalized, we'll still have the underlying housing shortage, and, and it's going to be causing upward pressure on housing prices. Now, the monetary policy report noted that, <clears throat> quote, home purchases by low-income households have fallen disproportionately more because mortgage lenders impose maximums on the ratio of a borrower's debt service payments to the borrower's income. I'm worried about how this dynamic will interact with the recently proposed capital requirements proposal, which according to analysis from the Urban Institute, would disproportionately increase the cost of mortgages for black, Hispanic, and low and income moderate uh, borrowers. Given this, isn't there a risk that if the capital rules implemented without changes, that it could make it even harder 
for disadvantaged borrowers to attain home ownership? There is a risk like that, and we're very focused on it. And uh, hopefully you're working to mitigate it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Chairman.